You're listening to an Anazal Ministries podcast. Okay, let's talk about it, guys. Uh, the much contended topic, the uh, the the con- most controversial thing I think we've discussed yet, are live action Disney remakes good or not? And what's been the best and worst of them? We're going to talk about it today, guys. We're going to be doing a quick review of most of the live action Disney reviews, and we're going to focus in on Alice in Wonderland, um, Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast, and Mulan. This is Systematic Geekology. We are the Priest of the Geeks. I am Joshua Knoll, your local Dis nerd and one of the co-hosts of the Whole Church Podcast, who's joined by the other co-host of the Whole Church Podcast, the one, the only, TJ Tiberius Juan Blackwell. Hello, hello. How are you? How are you? Yeah, how's it going? How's it going? And and back for a second time, special guest Elizabeth Pangling and Clyde. It's just so much fun to say say your name. How's it going? It is a fun time. (laughs) Yeah. Good. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, uh, before we jump into it, just kind of curious what you guys been geeking out on lately. Uh, TJ, what you been what you been doing? You know, a lot of the same things that I've been doing. Really, that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I've been geeking out really hard on uh, Guilty Gear Strive, <laughs> learning yeah. to use learning to use a fight pad. Sure. Yeah, I've uh, I've been I've mentioned this before, but I've been really getting into uh, Disney Kingdoms comics. It's uh, some comics that came out in, like the 2016 ish era, so it's like about some of the rides, like Enchanted Tiki Room, Haunted Mansion, that kind of stuff. It's a good time. Mangalian, what you been up to lately? Well, I just got a PS5. <sighs> I know, I know. I told you to get me one. <laughs> No, that's not going to happen. So I have been playing Persona 5 and, of course, watching the anime to go along with it. So that has been taking up the vast majority of my time. Oh, yeah. You should get Guilty Gear Strive. (laughs) Maybe I'm getting the One Piece. I haven't gotten the One Piece game yet because I asked for it for my birthday that's coming up. So I should be playing One Piece next week. It's really good. Also get Hogwarts Legacy. We already have that. Okay, good. Because I'm... I already got 24 hours in it. It's bye. Nice. I've been... Longing to play that. Yep. I've heard it's PS5. So keep longing. Yeah. PS5 superiority gang keeps growing. Yeah, man. If I had that kind of money. All right, guys. Now it's time to jump into the real, the real episode. <laughs> the real episode. Yeah. All oh. this is just nonsense. <laughs> yeah. So we are talking about the live action Disney movies today. We're going to start now. So why did we choose to talk about the live action Disney remakes? Oh, that's right. TJ wasn't there for that conversation. Because Josh hated on the live action Mulan. Yeah. Rightfully she so. mentioned liking Mulan, and I was like, there's a person who likes the live action Mulan? That exists? So we had to talk about it. So we have to a talk about it. A page of notes. <laughs> I will say, having rewatched it for this specifically, it's not as bad as I originally thought. Yeah. I did not hate it anywhere near as much as I did that first time. Yeah. And I also wasn't able to finish it the first time. This last time... You know, wasn't so bad. Yeah, I feel like Mulan is definitely like the most contentious remake. Like it, it's very polarizing. You either love it or you hate it. Josh will come back around to one of those opinions. Yeah, but you know, I think Lion King should be more contended. I didn't even bother watching just cause it because it wasn't good. <laughs> it can't be live action when it it's all CGI. Yeah, There's no live, live action, action. Well, so I refuse the to thing watch. Is it. Like Lion King was such like a like a staple of what disney is and of the disney renaissance era that it's like you think they would have gone all out for that and they kind of did technically like the budget was high the actors were awesome it just really fell flat for most people yeah no and i looked at reviews and i wanted to love it but it's just a me too (laughs) it's literally shot for shot the same and it's cgi so you just you're not going to get the magical of the animation they yeah and the only thing they actually really changed is uh they no longer sing be prepared which is top three best disney villain songs yeah and timon finished his lyrics yeah that that it was just if you're gonna do it exactly the same you gotta do it better or don't bother doing it right and uh yeah (laughs) yeah so uh why did these films matter to us why do the live action remakes mean so much because we are nineties just... babies. Wait, wait, TJ, you a nineties baby? You said you were young. Yep, technically. Ninety nine. Barely. What was it like December thirty first, nineteen ninety nine? It was in May okay. of ninety nine. All right. Well, we take you. Welcome. So, uh, Josh, why do why do these films matter to you? I grew up in Florida. For those who don't know, so Disney's always just been a huge thing for me. Also, you know, nineties. So we grew up in the Renaissance era of Disney. A lot of people argue that's the best era of Disney. I won't. 
Actually, I think one of my favorite eras of Disney is probably one, what's called the Dark Age that not a lot of people like. I love the Bronze Era. It was so good. No, that was the Gold Era. I liked like the Fox and the Hound, um, Great Mouse Detective, Black Cauldron. Uh, yeah, Black Cauldron, um, Oliver and Company. That era. Okay. Top tier for me, but it's not known as Disney's best for some reason <laughs> because of the Black Cauldron. It was a good one though. Oh, I love it. But that's I yeah. think that's generally what it is. <laughs> if they made a live action Black Cauldron, how would you feel about it, DJ? <laughs> It'd probably be really good. Honestly. Honestly, yeah. Yeah, it probably would. But yeah. speaking of it, what? how are we rating and reviewing these? We're, we're doing them 0 to 10. We're giving them a little review. But what matters, Pang? What, what matters in these remakes to you? I feel like keeping the spirit of the, of the show. Like even, and we'll get into it, but like there's some, like they completely did their own spin, but they still have the spirit of the original. And honestly, casting of the actors matters a lot. Yeah. Yeah, and in live action, it turns out it is important that your actors can act among other yeah. things. Yeah. What about you, Josh? Yeah. Uh, acting, chemistry, uh, to a smaller degree, accuracy to what you're remaking. Not necessarily to the source material, but if you're going to say you're remaking Disney's Mulan, I care that it's like Disney's Mulan. And um, I can tell you all how it's like it later. Anyway. Um but really, it just it needs to be a good movie. If you want to call it something, if you want to call it Pinocchio and make it about something completely different, like a Guillermo del Toro, whatever his his name is, he did. It wasn't a Disney live action remake. That movie was really good, unlike Disney's live action remake. Yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> for me, I think a lot of it is the music. True. Because especially like the Renaissance era of Disney, like this is. This this is Disney music. These are the Disney songs, but we are, do already yeah. have the Disney songs. So it's at the end of the day, it's not that important. But I mm. digress. <laughs> so I guess. we are each going to rate each of them from zero to ten and give a one sentence review on the major live action remakes since two thousand and ten. Because the first one, which a lot of people don't realize, was Alice in Wonderland. They just don't associate it as like one of the live action remakes. Yeah. So, uh, Josh. Zero to ten, one sentence. Tim Burton's Alice um, in Wonderland. Eight and a half. It was phenomenal. Barely counts as a remake because it was nothing like the original, really. All right, Pang. Alice in Wonderland. I, I would, I would say an eight. Um, just because I feel like the acting could have been a little bit better. Johnny Depp always a fantastic time, but I actually loved all the differences because they still kept the spirit. She fell down the rabbit hole. The big and the small, like painting the roses red, like it was still the spirit, but it was just a complete new take on it, which was fun because Tim Burton was all about it. And I love a little dark era that they went with. Yeah. All right. So Maleficent, Tang, zero to 10. One Wait a minute, TJ. What was yours? <laughs> oh, I yeah, don't want to do these. TJ. Fine. <laughs> I'll give it, um, I'll do the numbers though. I'll give it uh, yeah. an eight as well. It's a good movie. Yeah. Okay, Maleficent, I remember watching this and not being razzle-dazzled, but not hating it. So I'm going to just give a seven. I like that we got to see the character's backstory, but I don't want to sympathize with all the villains. I want to hate them. It's the point of a villain. True, usually. Yeah. I'm going to go with uh, five and a half. I thought it was really good, better than your average movie, but barely. And I do like sympathizing with my villains. I just didn't sympathize with her. All right, I'm... I'm going to give it a four. Uh, I think it was bloated. Hmm, fair. Yeah, bloated. Yeah. Josh, Cinderella, 0 to 10, yada, yada. Two, it wasn't awful, but I would never choose to watch it again. Two, a two out of 10 sounds like a pretty awful movie, in my opinion. It's definitely significantly worse than like an average movie. Most other movies I watch, I will enjoy more. Maybe a three. I'll bump it up to a three. Okay. Um. Five is average for me. <laughs> well, okay, in the so grading standpoint, uh, average is at least passing, and it's not even passing, but whatever. Uh, I would give that a nine because it was it was what it was. It was a Cinderella story, and you can't deny that the spirit of the Cinderella was what was there. Everyone was so well casted, and the actors really made that movie like like they all looked like the characters. They had the spirit of the characters, and 
only Cinderella. Like, think about how many other people have remaked that storyline of Cinderella. Mm-hmm. Like, it's iconic, and they nailed it. Yeah. All right. Uh, this is this is where I meet the road. Uh, full disclosure: I don't really care about seeing all of the Disney live action remakes, so I never saw the Cinderella remake. <laughs> uh, five out of ten. <laughs> hey, right. the Jungle Book. Boo. It was fun fact. There's actually two Jungle Book um, live actions, but we're talking about the 2016 one. Um, I did not like it. I would give it like a four out of ten. Mm. Yeah, I didn't like oh. that they changed the ending to the storybook, and I really am not a fan of animals talking. I feel like that's the opposite of live action. All right, uh, hmm. Josh, Jungle Book. I disagree with her assessment, but I'm still giving it a five out of ten. I liked it just as much as I would pretty much any other random average movie I put up on Netflix. Um, the songs and everything were good. We got the Fallout version of "I Want to Be Like You" because of it, and that's a that's a solid reason for the movie to exist. Yeah, I I hope I'm thinking about like now that I know there are two of them. I feel like I might have watched <laughs> the wrong one, but is the other one like way older? Yeah, yeah, like old old. old that's our talking. Yeah, Wiggly like as an adult. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You I probably wrote, well, you watched the right one. Yeah? Yeah. What'd you say? I love you this loved one. It. I'm going to give it like an yeah, eight and good. a half. I love Big Orangutan. Yeah. I like that part. <laughs> That's uh, one thing about me. I love a big monkey. Hmm. Yeah. All right. So, Josh, Beauty and the Beast. Nine and a half. It was excellent and better than its animated counterpart. Almost perfect. Pang. You disagree? I No. Okay. So, I love Beauty and the Beast so much. So, I would give it a. Uh, Eight and a half, maybe nine. It's hard to determine. I wasn't a big fan of the adding the Paris scene, like the Paris backstory. I also wasn't a big fan of um, how they like made the beast come out more arrogant. Like in the in the animated version, he gifted her the library. It was like it's yours, and it was like, oh my gosh, I want someone to gift me a library. And then in the live action, it was like, oh. Ugh, what a book snob you like to leave let me show you what books are and i'm like okay jerk whatever yeah. and also so much auto-tuning like that's why it would probably be a solid nine if it wasn't for all the auto-tuning um of the singing okay uh i'm gonna give it a nine i love this uh, i watched it with my friend seth while he was getting his dreads done which take took longer than the movie is and it's pretty long <laughs> um yeah. uh i said earlier Music was important. Evermore is, I think, the best song from a yes. Disney live action remake. Absolutely. So, 9 out of 10. And next, we're doing Christopher Robin Pang. I'm going to be honest, I wasn't a, I'm not a Pooh fan, so I didn't watch this one. It looked like it was just hmm. a dark, and it would probably make me sad, and I just didn't feel like watching it. Hmm. Josh? This one was the hardest to rate. I'm going to go 7 out of 10. It was really good. Um, I grew up watching Winnie the Pooh with my mom every weekday, got to watch this with my mom in the theater. So it was pretty cool. And it was kind of about, uh, uh, that's a, that's longer than a sentence. It was good though. It was good. It was good. Stayed though. to the spirit. Yeah. I didn't watch it because it's live action Disney and I don't, I don't really care. It's fine. fine. I'm glad I'm you're here, sure. TJ. Me well, too. <laughs> okay. Tim Burton's Dumbo. Josh. Mm. Solid eight. Absolutely fantastic. I just don't care that much about the story of Dumbo, but I think Tim Burton did excellent with this. I liked the tone of it a lot. That's really most of it. I just really liked the tone. All right. I'm going to say a five only because I started it, wasn't interested, and I didn't finish it. So can't comment on the ending. I also did not see this one. Ending was good. You should watch it. You would like it. Don't tell me what to do. No, no, TJ. I mean, TJ would like it. I know TJ's interest better. (laughs) A lot of these just fly under my radar, honestly. Yeah, I'll hear it comes fair. out, and then I'm like, that's cool, and then it comes <laughs> up again. So, Fair enough. Yeah. All right, Aladdin. Live action Aladdin. Pang. Okay, so love Aladdin. Have uh, had a crush on him, so I'm going to give this one probably like an... See, it's so hard because I want to do everyone eight and a half and a nine because <laughs> I feel like this... I feel like ten just doesn't really exist, if that makes sense. Thank you. At Christian Ashton. <laughs> Well, I mean, it's like, it's just, it will, it will leave me dumbfounded, awestruck and like amazed and nothing's happened like that. So I'm going to say nine, um, just solely, it would probably be a nine and a half if they didn't do that, the input of the, the feminists, like, I I love females, I love female power, but like that silent song did not need to be in there. And the casting of Jafar was really like, what? He was just blah. 
like Jafar was like twisted in the animation and like he was like he was just a very fun villain and this one was just like he was this yeah well, mm. well they can't see me doing my blank face but yeah. I did a blank face everyone yeah great <laughs> yeah Josh uh eight out of ten I agree with paying about the song sort of more on that later um I thought the rest of the so- the songs were done really well it was excellent and Will Smith was amazing agreed almost exactly mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yep <laughs> fair yeah we'll we'll discuss particularities later but um the lion king uh josh one solid right. one because yeah. you didn't give me zero as an option did you did you give me zero as an option uh, you can go zero you say to zero 10. out to ten okay well yeah. then i'll give it a half it wasn't the absolute worst movie i've ever seen and it wasn't that it was trash it's that you were trying to remake the cartoon so since that's part of our criteria man did you fail it was so like they did exactly the same thing they picked all the perfect cast and they made one of the most life filled animated movies feel completely lifeless so yeah not a fan i guess like, i refuse to watch it so i'm gonna give it a one but i actually looked it up i wanted to love it because i love <laughs> the line. like what yeah. what animated movie would you rewatch time and time again and still cry when Mufasa like dies, like it literally it imparts the same emotion time and time again. So I refuse to rewatch a crappy what I know movie and sully my memories. Fair, yeah. Um, didn't watch it. I everyone said it was bad. I trust them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, Josh, what about the live action Lady in the Tramp? Uh, seven. I thought it was awesome. During Christmas time, I'd probably rank it higher. It felt a lot more Christmassy than the original. It was good. Yeah, it yeah. was good. Yeah. What about you, Peng? Live action Lady Tramp. I would do seven again. It's just a big preference. Not like I'm. I'm thankful they used real dogs, but I'm like, animals don't talk. So I feel like live action, and I get it because we can be like magic live action, whatever. But I like that they used um, real dogs, and I like the fact that I went to the same sweet shop that was in the film in Savannah, Georgia. Nice. Is that what that is? Mm-hmm. It's like a little awesome. chocolatier shop. Hmm. Yeah, we've probably been there then. <laughs> yeah, but, probably. Uh, I also didn't watch that one. Fair. You didn't miss much. Yeah, no, you that's did. That's what I'm hearing. It was good. It was really good. So, Pang, uh, Mulan, one sentence <laughs> and zero to ten. Nine and a half. And I give it the half just for those dang haters. Because yeah. Mulan animation, I can literally quote it. I can quote it word for word. I love it. I identified with Mulan so much because my nickname is Pang. She was Ping. So just grew, I grew up loving this anime. So when everyone who says they are legit fans of Mulan says they hate it, I'm like, there's no way. There's no way you're a legit fan of Mulan. So Josh, let's start fighting. Why did you hate this? We can't. We can't fight here. This is the one sentence Why? review. Why? We Why? fight later. Soon. But I want to fight That's now. just how the outline's fight. written. <laughs> but you, you don't. We have, we I'm going to give it more. a 6 out of 10. No, don't do it. Um, Originally, I probably would have given it like a 1. But knowing what to expect when you go into it really makes a huge difference with this one. You yeah. knew. Okay, well, well, I'll wait. Did it wait? It's fine. That right. <gasps> yeah. All right. I, I would probably give it a 7. I. It's not. To me, it's not a remake of Mulan at all, but true. I like it as a movie. I think it's good. I like the action a lot. I'm a big yeah. fan of like Chinese magic in, in media. Yeah. It's always cool to see. So, Josh, Cruella, 0 to 10. Oh, I forgot about that one. Uh, haven't seen it. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I would argue that one's not a remake either because it's the backstory of Cruella, like M- Maleficent. I liked it better, though. I like Corella's backstory a lot better and made her more identify. I would give that one a three. It's really good. Yep. I also haven't seen that one. All right. Pang. Pinocchio, zero to ten. Pin- oh, yeah. I forgot about Pinocchio. Um, it was it was probably about seven. It wasn't my favorite like anime, but it was a good movie. And that anime, gosh. Animated film. Same thing. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, Josh. My plan was to watch it immediately after watching the one, um, like, Guillermo. How do I say that, DJ? Guillermo. Yeah. Del Toro. I'm we'll just saying Del Toro. Yeah. Well, I watched Del Toro's Pinocchio and then just decided it was so good that there's just no way that I would watch another Pinocchio and not hate it afterwards. So I didn't watch it. That's fair. Also, exactly yeah. what I did. <laughs> I love That's Guillermo hilarious. Del Toro. He's my favorite director. I watched his the day it came out. I'm not watching the other ones. 
Yeah. Sorry, Disney. There's no way it's as good. It's just no way. Yeah. So yeah. that being said, I'll give it like a nine and a half out of ten. That movie was almost perfect. Are you are you talking about <laughs> Del Toro? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, me too, yeah, then. If we're just gonna rate something that's not a live action remake while we're here. Yeah. That that's nine and a half out of ten. I agree. Yeah. yeah. So four of these, you might have been able to tell while we were doing that. We wanted to focus on a little bit more. We wanted to, you know, take a little extra time to talk about Alice in Wonderland, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, and Mulan. So we are going to do Mulan last. Pang has to control her blood lust until then. <laughs> so Alice in Wonderland, live action. Yeah. Josh, go yeah, ahead. So, yeah, what didn't you like about it? I thought I said it was awesome. Oh, okay. Just kidding. My bad, my bad. <laughs> I'm just so ready to like fight with you. I don't know. Why. I've been with kids all day and I can't fight with them. So I'm just ready to get it all out. The plot and stuff is nothing like the animated or like the book. Technically, Disney's animated film was a lot closer to the book. Um, for those who don't know, this book is my favorite storybook of all time. So I do care a lot about this, but they got the tone and I think the message a lot better done in this. It came across more clearly than I think the animated film did. For those who don't know, the author was a logician. And the entire point of the series is just kind of a series of stories that takes how you do structured logic and then just reverses it so that it's the opposite of logic. So when you see the live action film and they make a huge deal out of, I believe, 10 impossible things or however many it was before breakfast. Yeah, that's sort of the point of the book. So that was really cool. I like that they included that. Yeah. Bang. You also like this movie a whole lot. From what I remember, I just have a crush on Johnny Depp as the Mad Hatter, so I was really excited about it. Me too. That's a good enough reason, I think. <laughs> Johnny Depp did do an excellent job in this too, though. So good, so good. Yeah, that's the I, other I, spelling point. <laughs> yeah, I wish Alice wasn't as like weird. Almost, you know. I know she was like, like supposed that. to be like, you know. I, I know like people like it, but I just wish like she looked a little bit more like less ghostly, if yeah. you will. I really, yeah, which. I also really like that Tim Burton made everything look so like not like, you know, like it just none of it looked right. And I think that's how it should look if you're in Wonderland. Nothing should quite look right. That was fun for me. Yeah, I think it, it was really underrated as far as like live action True. remakes go because they don't consider one. You know, even yeah. me, I don't really ever think of it as a Disney live action remake. It doesn't feel like one. But no, I, guess, I actually yeah. forgot it was a live action. <laughs> Put yeah. this list together. It feels like it's its own thing, separate from mm -hmm. the cartoon or the book or anything. And I like it as its own separate thing. I usually have the its version of Alice, the score that it does. I, I usually include it in our Disney road trip when we drive to Disney World. It's good. That's it's true. Fun. Yeah. I say we should plan a trip, a game trip for Disney. I summer. agree. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Systematic Geekology, all of us. Yeah. Patrons, you're paying. So we need more patrons. Sign yeah. up now. <laughs> So, oh, man. Uh, you have anything else you wanted to say about Alice? I'm good. No. All right. If Josh is good, then it's over. Uh, wow. Beauty in the Pool. He usually talks about Alice a lot. <laughs> uh, I have a lot to say, but more about the book. So I'll, yeah. I'll save it for later. So Beauty and the Beast. A lot of people's favorite one. A lot of people think it's the best one. Yeah. What, what do you think, Pang? I I truly do love it. And because I loved it so much, I feel like it will, I was a little more critical like Gaston, perfect. LeFou, perfect. Mm, I hate yeah. to say it because I love, I love Harry Potter. I feel like Emma could have done a better job being Belle. Just saying. No. I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> that's uh, that. But I think it's the singing. I think it's the singing. That's why I think that. Because she was so good at it. No, because she was so out of tune. It was so good. Yeah, but I really did. I, I liked it overall. It was really great and fantastic. But I would rather watch the animated film. Absolutely not. Yeah, you can be wrong. I I do get I get especially for the nostalgia feels why people would like the animated film better. And there's Lumiere a lot of reasons. Casted right either, like Lumiere should have been more like Razzle Dazzle. Did you just say Lumiere wasn't casted right when Ewan McGregor was Lumiere? I feel like you could have been a little bit more Razzle Dazzle. Just saying, I have my I opinion. It's possible. Oh, just... more wrong than that. Yeah, it's fine. You That's can incredible. Be wrong. Um, just, I'm just like, I, I wanted a little bit more like Razzle Dazzle from Lumiere. Because yeah. he's one of my favorite characters too. He wasn't my favorite character until Ewan McGregor was him, but then yeah. Oh. Yeah. That was awesome. Owen McGregor. I just like I just like his voice so much. Um I yeah, I so the so a lot of the point of this, which is why this story is so good, 
there's so many different points and it's brought out better in the live action than it is the cartoon. Also, neither of them are even sort of like the original source material. That's just a side note. The source material is nothing like this at all. For those who are wondering, it just involves a lot of people being cursed and tricking each other in wars. Um, <laughs> but the, um, the story is the princess is the one who saves the prince. Beast is the one who gets saved this time. That's why I thought it was such a phenomenal story from the get go is that it's not about Belle being this, you know, the woman who's the damsel in distress. It's he is trapped. She saves him and her whole, which is a lot of part what people make fun of, like how she longs for adventure, but she's able to take that and show Beast all these different places through books, even though he was hesitant at first, which you see a lot more clearly in this because he was more arrogant in this one, like he should have been. And they were able to show through that, how he kind of sees the world differently because of her and how he's able to take her places from that one magical thing there. And then of course the song evermore makes it even more clear that he's the one being saved, which was also just awesome song. And it just, it was just so well done. Just but the beautiful. ending, the ending, as they're dancing, she's like, how do you feel about growing a beard? And he, like, growls. It was cringy to me. I was like, that, that was, was so great. stupid. That was, that was so stupid. You're wrong. <laughs> stupid. How do you feel about growing TJ. a beard? TJ. That's kind of funny. Final word. It's a little funny. <laughs> it's not yeah. not cringe, but it's a little funny. Yeah. I, mean, I think it was supposed to be cringe. But. So, uh, to me, Beauty and Beast live action is great because it captures how grand the animated one felt true it yeah. felt like you know like wow this is this is really something going on here you know at least to me i did like how they tripped us out though like whenever like the last puddle fell i was losing my ever-loving mind in the theaters oh yeah, yeah. that was oh, that was the tension that was, was great beautiful. it also, was so good like whenever also, like he called chip I was like, oh, thank you, Jesus. also i am slightly biased uh there is a Ongoing debate on whether this movie or Lego Batman was me and Tiffany's first date. Depends who you ask and when you ask. When did you guys start dating? Because this movie I saw. Around when this came out. <laughs> I was say on my time hop, I saw, I think it was like 10 years ago. Like Taylor and I yeah. was going to the movies. No, 2016, yeah. right? Or 2017. I I 2017? Remember. I think it's, it's 2017. When. Okay, maybe it wasn't 10 years ago. But it was, we, it came up on my time hop. We went to the movies. Like Probably. six years ago. That's a long time ago. Maybe. Still, yeah. I'm old. I can't remember. That is a long time ago. Yeah, but I wasn't an adult six years ago. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. All right. That's all. <laughs> Aladdin. Cool. Josh, how do we feel about live action Aladdin in depth, in detail? God. It was it was so great. Um, I was really worried about it because it was one of those classics that there's just the expectations were too high. You know, um, they had to cast genie as someone other than Robin Williams, which is an impossible task. And man, they, it was impossible to do this movie well, and they did it. You know, um, the casting was great. The themes, like the feel of it was great. A lot of the music, honestly, if I'm going through Aladdin songs, it's probably close to half and half. If I prefer the live action or cartoon version of the songs and Will Smith made the genie his own, he didn't try to remake Robin Williams. And that's why it was good. If he would have tried to do it exactly the same, would have been awful. I also did like that they included the storyline about Jasmine and the female power and all that. I just didn't like how they did that second song number. It felt like it was out of place. Yeah. But when your theme came out of nowhere. Yeah. that That's what bothered me. It's just that it came out of nowhere. Like but everyone th- stays still and all of a sudden she yeah. has a moment. I'm like, that's no. It killed me. Like it. Yeah, that, that took me out of the movie. That was like the big detractor for me. But when you think about the theme of Aladdin, which also they got pretty close to like the original source, except for, you know, Jafar is really like seven different bad guys in the original story, but whatever. They just combined them into one. Why not? Um, but the, I don't know. I, I think the theme of Aladdin is that he felt trapped because he's a poor person and because, you know, all of these things that were stereotyped about him and he thought he could never amount to anything. And to see that also kind of paralleled with Jasmine's story, feeling that she was trapped because she was a princess and she was a woman and had certain expectations to see both of them kind of learn what it means to be free and then come together. That was great. I love the theme, the feminine storyline. I thought it went well with the theme, I just think they could have done that song a little bit better. Um, yeah, but it's it's also on its own. It is a great song. Like when yeah. I'm doing my True. Disney playlist, I just 
And I think it was at that time, too, when Aladdin came out, it was a big push for just, like, woman power. And it was just one of those, like, okay, here's another one. Got yep. it. But um, <laughs> yeah. that's just me. And I think I'm just, because I am a female and stuff like that, like, I roll my Wait, eyes really? extra hard. I mean, I, I, my husband <laughs> really enjoys that fact about me. But I just, I kind of, like, I, I, I side-eyed it I even more. Because I'm, like, really, again, like, I remember whenever, I think, I, we were coming from a church conference and there was a really powerful like woman speaker there like how'd you enjoy listening from a, a woman speaker i was like i got the same out of it if she was a male or female if she's just preaching the gospel like <laughs> what is what does she being a female have to do with anything so i'm just like blah but i Fair. loved it i loved i loved aladdin i felt like he was casted really well like you know my adult self can still kind of have a little like crush <laughs> yeah. on him so that's important i'm I'm a hopeless romantic, guys. If you haven't noticed, I was trying to ship um, anime characters in the last podcast that shouldn't be shipped. <laughs> but if there's any kind of romance, I'm like, I'll sniff it out. Um, so I love that. I love their relationship. They had great chemistry, too, because a lot of um, people yeah. just do not have good chemistry. So it felt like Aladdin and Jasmine. And maybe that was one of my problems with, like, the Beauty and the Beast. Like, maybe I just, like, didn't feel the chemistry I thought was there because he, you know what I mean? Like, since it is, like, a beast, I don't know. But I, I loved it. Yeah, I I don't the chemistry like they both. just didn't have the chemistry. Like if I think of Belle and the Beast in live action versus Aladdin and Jasmine, I feel like they had better chemistry in the live action together. I don't have to think about that. Me I'm wrong. But also, yeah. Will Smith had great chemistry with everybody too, which is a huge. Yeah, part. I liked his little backstory yeah. too about him like you <laughs> yeah, know, falling. that was like, great. Yeah, little Good love addition. story too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I was a fan of that. Yeah. See, I I really did. I love Will Smith's genie. Of course, I don't love him as much yeah. as Robin Williams' genie. Same. But I really did watching it in theaters. I feel like watching it at home, not even the same. If I'd watched it at home for the first time, probably wouldn't have liked it that much. But Prince Ali in theaters, yeah, <laughs> felt like you know, like this is probably what it was like to experience it if you were on the street. Yeah, that was a fun. That's my favorite song out the whole. Oh, it was whole, so good, so I, good. I liked the remix of uh, "Friend Like Me." They do it during the credits too. Thought it was great. TJ, we watched this together in theater, we didn't did. we? And I Angel. So. Angel was also there. Yeah. Hello, Shout date. out to Angel. That's cute. Yeah. Well, there was like a whole work group group date. There were like four or five of us, but it was a date yeah. for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, Aladdin All right. good. We like Aladdin. Yeah. Mulan, however. <sighs> That's what the divide is. <laughs> well, you know, I'm not trying to divide anybody. Yeah. Disney divided us when they released this movie true no no here's the thing because they gave the expectation (laughs) they said they were going to make it like the original historic Mulan. they gave that expectation (laughs) no okay go ahead tell me what you don't like about it no we're saying they're trying to make it like the original story um Uh, they try to to make it more like historic at one point the story actually did have Mulan coming back to her family but the way the story actually goes is she goes back to her town it's empty and all her family died and then she kills herself so yeah. they didn't do that at all. <laughs> It'd be like that sometimes. <laughs> that was deleted scenes, Josh. Oh, I missed that. Get the yeah. DVD. <laughs> um, one thing I didn't know, though, that I, like, I, I did some research about this because I was just curious. The, the other female character, it felt to me when I first watched it and the second time I watched it, that she was kind of pigeonholed in there. Like they were like, oh, we need a female bad guy, too. But no, that's actually part of the, the original story. So, yep. that, yeah. Okay, I'm glad you got that right. But That's also, cool. if you, the poetic is, she kept on turning into a hawk and she was the guy's second in command. And in the anime, who was on his shoulder all the time? The freaking hawk. So there was like, you know, imagery there. Yeah. But uh, most yeah. importantly, the things that make Mulan a good movie, the animated one, yeah, are, are the songs and Mushu. So uh-huh. both of those are missing. Which makes it a bad. The movie. songs were not missing. The songs they actually were. singing was missing, but the yeah, that's the what makes spirit, a song a song. The spirit of <laughs> no. the songs were there. The spirit, and I can tell you every single thing. So whenever she's getting ready, they had the um the getting ready with me song going like wait and see when what like that was there. So a true Milan fan, we're going to be excited because we hear it. And then and then when whenever they were right before in boot camp, the general said. We're going to make men out of you. And they did the same like scenes, like the iconic scenes while they were training. So there was the spirit of that song. And whenever she's like trying to like enhance her chi, the reflection song is playing 
in the background. So that is her reflection showing her inner self. So there is a song, sir. And they did it Disagree. with the um and they did it with the 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 man song that I can't think of. The Make a man right out of you. Now. Yeah. No, 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 yeah. not the man one. The um Oh, um uh, a girl worth fighting for? Yeah, a girl worth fighting for. Yeah, was that like, was funny. It doesn't matter what she looks like. I care about what she cooks like. And she's like, how about yeah. a girl worth... Yeah. The, yeah. All the songs are there. Like, See, gosh. I noticed all of that when I watched it the second time, which is why I bumped it up to like a six. But but if you're not going to do the actual full musical numbers, don't do the movie. They literally not said... Worth it. They said this is what they're doing. And yeah. they wanted it... Which they is when they should have known not to make so it. animated and cheesy. They wanted it to be more like like it was almost a historic... Document, not documentary you were watching, but that's what the feel they were going for, and they gave out what they were yeah. doing beforehand. It's not Disney's job to meet your expectations. That's true. Yeah, that's true. They can make however bad a movie as they want. More power to them. <laughs> also, the real thing that bothered me the most about it, honestly, the cheese storyline, I just did not like that at all. It felt very much like Disney doing their, the power is in you, and if you just connect to yourself then you can do it and i'm like that's yeah, just i will say mostly I wasn't not the biggest true fan of tea either like i wasn't i was like okay but i was thinking back in ancient times i was like i i can see how this fits so i will give you the chi is not my favorite but it's still not. and i feel like by making chi basically superpowers i feel like they kind of demean the actual religious beliefs about chi and I'm like, that's kind of seemed off putting to me. Like, I was like, you know, I feel like you could be more respectful by it, by not including superpowers that aren't necessary. They were trying with the chi thing. And really the only superpower was with like the mystery, like the, what's her name? Z- Yang. I can't say it because I'm trying to think of it. Yeah. But that was really like because of her transformation. Like really their chi was almost like enhanced abilities i wouldn't really call it superpower and that's just kind of getting in tuned with yourself and with your body but i feel like what they try to do which is once again it was during that time when it was supposed to be released was that big female power movement and it Mm -hmm. was symbolizing like no girls don't have chi boys have chi so they were just trying to do they use that more for the divide of the female male scenario because she needed yeah. to be masked as a man but i agreed she was not my favorite apart from that. and this actually it loses no points for this but i feel like i'd be at fault to not mention just how cheesy it felt that one scene where the phoenix comes behind her and it's like raising her wings and i'm like you just didn't need that to do cool. that no i just i didn't, I didn't, hate didn't it. like that <laughs> big fan of a scene you know honestly the, the thing that to me was the biggest plus of the live action though is the original story that's been around for 2000 years, apparently plus crazy, but yeah. Um, the, the, um, the original story had a lot to do with her learning to value her family. So the fact that they had the sword and they added that symbol, that was like the value of family or whatever. I was like, okay, that's, that was pretty cool. That was a good nod to the original moral of the story. Mm Mm-hmm. And one thing about the Phoenix, why I I don't know exactly why they replaced it with Musu. I didn't get like too far into that rabbit hole because I enjoyed the movie. Um, mm-hmm. The Phoenix back in the day was represented apparently like male and female. Like there used to be a male one and a female one, and then later mm-hmm. on they just combined it into one, and it symbolizes how she has like embodied like the male and female of chi or something like that. Yeah, I don't they know. they but had that's to why uh, they, did. they had to sell the yeah. original to children, so they put in the funny dragon. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, well, so we love Mushu. Don't get me wrong. We lo- and it, there was a nod to Mushu. If you if you look, they had like dragon embroidered on the sword. Whenever like they, she opened it, there was like dragons embroidered, like you know, like hidden yeah. in like Easter eggs and stuff like that. And also, whenever um, the general was talking to the troops about like how you would get kicked out of camp and what happened, he <laughs> said, "Disgrace, disgrace on you, disgrace on your family, disgrace." So there was like a nod to Mushu. Which, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love yeah. Mushu. Like, Nothing replaces a real Mushu. <laughs> but there was no place for a talking dragon in a live action. Disagree. It would have been great if they also did the songs and just did it exactly. If they just would have only let, did the animated movie. No, I don't know. I don't know how they would have done this better, honestly, because it's just kind of a hard one to translate, I guess. It just felt, I don't know. It, it felt odd. I didn't like it as much without Mushu. My understanding, though, was that a lot of people 
particularly like Chinese government had, took issue with uh, Mushu yeah, in some offensive. of the songs. Well, yeah, they took it then, as being demeaning to to their traditions. Well, I mean, Mushu made a lot of racist slur jokes in the anime in the animated um one that we didn't. Yeah, you know, catch too. as a young one. Yeah. So it was very offensive to like Chinese culture. Yeah, but I, I do think without the racist part, so we, uh, you know, not that part, but no, I think we need, the rest. <laughs> It has to say just added advisory. Yeah. But the rest of the parts of like Mushu in the songs, and, and this also goes for like Aladdin. I don't think we would have gotten any introduction to different beliefs or this kind of culture allowed in animated films in the nineties without some of that kind of downplaying it. You know, like I'm thinking about it now. I'm like, man, my parents let me watch a movie where they talked about Allah and sung about Allah in the songs. You know, I'm like, that's actually kind of weird. <laughs> But I think if they didn't downplay stuff a little bit, we wouldn't have been introduced to the culture. And I think overall, it's a good thing to be introduced to other cultures, even if you disagree with some of their values and religious beliefs. Yeah. Yeah. So, Pang, is there anything on that sheet that you haven't brought up yet? No, no. Oh, also, I mean, it's just a cute little, like, I just feel like the people who hate on Mulan so much because they say they love the original... I question how much you truly love the original because you're going to love it because it's still a product from Mulan. You know what I mean? Like you couldn't have the live action without Mulan. And so if you truly loved it, you would find things to love. Like the little sidekick, his name was Cricket. You know what I mean? And he kept on like, he almost died like three or four times, but he was freaking lucky. So even Cricky was like um, portrayed in it, but only like people who really love Mulan will appreciate the little Easter eggs in it. So here's my counter to that. Okay. If that were true, everyone who loved Lion King should love the live action Lion King because it was exactly the same. But you don't because it just wasn't done as well. No, there's no Easter eggs. They just tried to mimic. No, no, no. Because with the Lion King, they literally just tried to CGI replicate. This was not a CGI replicate. There was no yeah. Easter eggs in Lion King. That's true. But the same thing, the same problem still attaches. It's just, it wasn't done as well. It didn't have the same feeling. It didn't have the same excitement. It was just. Well, I'm going to be like the rest of the world and blame that on COVID. That's yeah. fair. If we yeah. would have seen it in theaters, we might have enjoyed it more. That I'm actually really... is probably true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I think what it is, is Mulan is such a good movie that it didn't need to be remade. Am I That's saying fair. it's the best one in the Renaissance? I don't know. You tell me. No. Hercules. All the way. Oh, okay. I would love to see a remake of Hercules. <laughs> well, good news. You mean you mean Huncules? I can like you mean that one. Huncules. Is it is it in the um? I yeah, they're it is, they're right? making it. it they are making I it. I read that. I um. Was another one. I'm cautiously it's, excited. It is I'm by far excited. my favorite thing. It was one of the ones growing up that I connected with the most. This guy who just completely feels like he doesn't belong. I love it. Um. The thing that makes me most excited is when they <laughs> when they talked to Danny DeVito. They were asked him if he was going to be in it. He was like, yeah, of course. They were like, sweet, you're going to be Phil, right? And he's like, Phil, no. I'm going to be Hercules. Yeah. <laughs> he started flexing. I'm like, man, if they would actually do it make Danny DeVito Hercules, it'd be my favorite movie. <laughs> yeah. I just, just hope they don't so do silly. The Rock. Because The Rock would be too. That's true. Like, that would be You know annoying. what I mean? Like, that's just too much. I was like, I'm we did it. You're, he's yeah. cool, but. Like, you I'm already tired. Maui, okay? Calm down. Yeah. You're a god. No. You don't get to be another one. True. I think I think it's funny how much Mulan and Hercules really have in common. Yeah, that's like fair. that. They're they're pretty similar movies when now you think you about it. Out, yeah, <laughs> like that they is are fair. Was, okay, so I even disagree with Disney. Do, would you count Mulan as a Disney princess? No, technically by Disney she is. Yes. Wrong. You so you would say she's a Disney princess? So by Disney standards, because she like saved the world, or because she's a hero, a heroine, she gets to be classified as a princess. Fair. I disagree. She's my princess. <laughs> Fair enough, TJ. Uh, my argument is uh, is very simple, and it's not surprising to anybody. So Mulan is in Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom Hearts has the nine princesses of hearts, and when they redo it, they come up with new nine princesses of hearts. Mulan's not considered either. Thus, she's not a princess. Kyrie is. Kyrie is a Disney princess. Kyrie all the way. Yeah, that's because yeah, Square just, Enix is dumb. Like no, she married. Right. <laughs> well, even if you do the you know the animation and stuff like that, she married general so she didn't she's not born to a king and she didn't marry a prince so i will always say beauty and the beast is my favorite disney princess movie and then mulan is my favorite disney. fair enough hercules is my favorite both as well he is my favorite disney princess 
I feel like I think yeah because Meg isn't counted as a Disney mm-hmm. princess and no. technically she helped her she shouldn't be either. save all the people. I mean, I'm saying by definition, technically Meg helped save you know like, all those people with her toys. By actually, by my own criteria, I think my favorite Disney princess is Alice. <laughs> I don't know how to explain that one to you, but she's a princess of heart, apparently. So, is this where we agree to disagree with Josh? Mm, we usually just say, Josh, that's a bad opinion. Yeah, you know what? I think it is. I don't know why she was counted as a princess of heart, but since she was, Kingdom Hearts, you know, they, you know, can't, just like I believe in biblical inerrancy, I, be, I believe in Kingdom Hearts inerrancy. It's Everything it says inerrancy. about Disney has to be true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> My yeah. favorite Disney princess is probably Morph from Treasure Planet. <laughs> <laughs> no right tj wins yes they can be any of them <laughs> no <laughs> are there any Gosh, other live actions coming up that we're excited for or not excited for? Uh, treasure planet they haven't announced it yet <laughs> but they're we'll gonna do it, do it i don't know i don't I know so. what live actions are com- i'm kind of like tj like i'll i'll hear I'm, about it and then i'll forget about it and I'll, I'll catch up later so i am excited for the peter pan and wendy i think it can be done well, and it sounds like they're putting a lot of good effort into it. That's going to come out shortly after dark. we make this come out. It's not. It doesn't look like no? it's going to be. Um, Hook already but, exists. Yeah. The um, the one that I think I'm most concerned about is Hunchback of Notre Dame. Dude, okay. Because that, that's one that where... music is one of the best mu- Disney music oh, yeah. ever. That is my favorite Disney villain song. Hellfire so is good. awesome. Um, so good. But... If you're going to be doing it like accurate to both the cartoon and the original source, that live action film should be rated R and they're not going to do that. So I just read rather them not make it. Does Disney even have a rated R? Uh, like Deadpool. Movie Technically, movie? yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really associate Deadpool with Disney. Have you all seen Little Mermaid should. yet? That's in theaters right now. What? I didn't think it was out yet. I thought it's it was not, like I two months was. from now or something. I don't Why know. did I think it was I thought out? it was June. I don't know. What is it? You might be right. <laughs> Which one? Which right? I hope it's what? not out because oh, May 26th. May 26th. Okay. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Is that your birthday? Wow. It is. <laughs> They've been talking just... about this for a hot minute then. <laughs> yeah. But we'll see. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, and with that, let's go ahead and, and jump to the wrap up. We've talked about this long enough. Um, so we like to start with recommendations. Um, I will not recommend Milan to anybody, but what I will recommend, <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of what I, what I want to recommend. Um, you know what? Here's one that just to surprise TJ. I'm going to recommend the Dresden files. Start listening to an audiobook. Surprisingly good. Not, I mean, not that surprising. TJ and Christian has been talking about it for a while, which is why I listened to it. I was like, man, I actually could get into this, which is upsetting because it's an incredibly long series. Yeah. TJ, do you have a recommendation for everybody? Uh, yeah, I was recently reminded by somebody saying that the Twilight books were very good. What my favorite fantasy book is, everybody should read The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. It's amazing. <laughs> the language Patrick Rothfuss uses is beautiful. He is an artist with words. The book is fantastic. I couldn't recommend it enough. It is perfect. Hmm. Would you rate that 10 out of 10? Yes. I've just been waiting for something that you would. That's exciting. No, I'm gonna put that on the topic now. list then. I'm gonna read it. <laughs> it's so right, good. You have a recommendation I, for everybody. I do, I do. So I've been um I got this for Christmas and it's just a fun little read. So if you um I'm just gonna read the the book, the the little <laughs> background. Ready? <clears throat> I gotta do it in my anime voice. Being a Christian can be tough. Being an otaku can be tough, but being both at once so it's literally just a little devotional on amazon it says finding god in anime a devotional for otaku so it literally will go through like the different like there's so many animes in there and they just do like little devos on it and it's fun some of them very stretchy some of them funny some of them like it hits a little bit but yeah that's what i recommend that is fun. I yeah, of, that's cool yeah yeah it's like eight bucks so i mean who doesn't have eight bucks to waste yeah but it's, it's not a waste list. because it's also about you know jesus yeah, yeah. but also I have to buy so many other things to get to that on my list. It'd be a lot more than eight bucks. I'm telling you, be a such a long list. You can make so much money. All right, guys. So with that, underserved market. (laughs) Um, and and of course, if you want TJ feet picks, go to our Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash systematic geekology. If we get a hundred people to sign up this week, he will send I don't know ten pictures of his feet. Um, (laughs) wow, just for you guys. Yeah, yeah. 
So 100 people need to sign up this week to our Patreon page. Um, and you'll get a lot of cool, you know, bonus episodes over there. You can hear people talk about comic books or manga. We have Manga Mustard is adding to our regular roster over there. Maybe uh, Pang will join that one day. And guys, make sure you go to systematicgeekology.org. Hit the host tab. You can see all of our names, except for Pang. But, you know, you hit the guest tab to see other episodes she's been on. And follow us. Avoid us if you want. Whatever. And remember, we're all a chosen people. A geekdom of priests. This was an Anazao Ministries podcast. If you enjoyed this show and would like to learn more about our network, be sure to check out the Anazao Ministries podcast network.